The next thing we need to do is introduce some sort of tribal speak. Now, I don't know if any of you have traveled around the world or been anywhere where English was not the primary language, but if you have, and you ever remember walking down the street or being in a restaurant and you hear someone else speaking English, especially American English, right? If you're all, if you're all Americans, you immediately go over and talk to that person. You're immediately connected to them. Oh, you speak the same language I do inside of this very chaotic, noisy place where they're speaking something I don't understand. You ran across that same person walking down your street, down Main Street, you'd ignore them, right? Because you're in an environment where everyone speaks the same language. So we wanna introduce certain key things here that will help our people with specialized words, specialized terms, so they, our people understand what is expected, what we want from them, and how to move forward in the organization. If you just say we're going to have a meeting, what does that mean? Am I coming to collaborate? Am I coming to help? Am I coming to run it? Am I, what am I supposed to do in this meeting? Right? We need to change the name of all our meetings. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But the first thing we do from a tribal speak standpoint is we introduce it. My, my company it was one of the best things we ever did. So when we were all in one office, if we wanted to celebrate somebody, I would walk out to the cubicle farm. I'd have them stand up. If they were an extrovert, they were excited. If they were an introvert, they were now terrified that I have now had them stand up in front of everybody. And I would say, hey, this person did a great job. We'd all clap for them, yay. And that was it, right? How do you do that in remote? How do you do that when everyone's not in the same place? What if we had different locations around the world, around the country? How do you do that? So we have a water cooler room in our Slack room. So our Slack room, you could use Teams, whatever. You could do it on email, it doesn't matter. But we, when we know that someone did something good, if you notice it, it's like, if you see something, say something, except in a good way here. And we go and say, hey, I noticed that Tom did this great thing with the client today that really helped him out, green flag, way to go, Tom. And then everyone comes in and says, green flag, way to go. And we just pat each other on the back. We don't track it, we don't bonus on it. We don't get promotions on it. No, I have no idea how many green flags any one person got throughout the year. It's just purely thank you. So this green flag idea alerts everyone to, hey, we're praising someone, we're saying thank you, and we're helping our organization move forward in a positive way. Now, the other bits of tribal speak that we have invented over the years are around our meetings. So the first meeting we have is called a cockroach meeting. And this is our most popular meeting. We do about 35 of these a day. They run an average of eight minutes. So a cockroach meeting is, uh, imagine if you had a cockroach in your bathroom, right? It's a small problem. There's only one that we know of. And you may not want to be the one to clean it up, but that, that's okay. But it's, it's a small thing, right? So we call a cockroach meeting and it is optional to attend. 15 minutes or less, always starts on time, always ends early, and um, one single agenda item. This is just help me with this problem, right? I don't know how to do this thing. Can you help me? Okay. And that is why it's so important that we change the language here because we don't need to come on and have an hour long Zoom meeting about one issue, right? It, and we don't need to talk and we don't need to chit chat with each other and we don't need to get ask how the kids are. It's just, hey, I don't know how to do this thing in Excel. Like, can someone, I keep doing it and the formula keeps breaking and you ask some people to come together. Oh yeah, I know how to do that. Or no, I don't know how to do that. You should maybe talk to so-and-so they can help you. Okay, cool. Thanks everyone off, right? And you've now eliminated two or three hours of you doing your own research or you calling people around the organization trying to figure out a small thing that maybe a team of people already knew how to fix. It is mega important. I mentioned this about starting on time. All of your meetings need to start on time and they should never ever go over. So we have people sing if they're not in the meeting by nine oh meetings at nine at nine oh one, we start rolling and they come in at late at nine oh two, they're singing a song for us, right? We have a that's our fun way to uh, reinforce this idea of being on time, and that includes me. I've had to sing before, um, even though I'm the CEO. I you know I don't I don't get a pass. Starting on time also sends the message that we care about your time. No one's time is more important than anybody else's and that we care about money. If you are allow people to sit on a meeting and wait for you for five, eight minutes, think how much you're paying all those people to sit there and wait for you or wait for somebody else. 
that is a subtext, a subconscious message to everyone that we don't care about something, right? Money, time, whatever it is. And that permeates throughout the organization in a really, really cancerous way. So this is a great way to reinforce things that we care about as an organization. The next one that we do is called an ostrich meeting. So this is pretty similar to a cockroach meeting uh, other than it's just, hey, help me get my head out of the sand. Help me understand something. So there's two versions of this that we do on all, all the time. One, and this happens a lot with me, someone will say, hey, Chris, can you come and help us with this thing? Or, hey, can you be on this sales call? It's at the very end, it's a big potential client. I'll say, cool, let's do an ostrich meeting. I need to know what you know. Help me, fill me in on what's going on so that I can show up to the meeting and, 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 and do whatever I can do to help, right? The second ostrich meeting what we do is we do not let people read their emails on vacation. If you go away for four more days on vacation or on leave or whatever, you're out of the office and you're not supposed to be paying attention to us, we ask everyone to put a very specific message. They can be fun with it all they want, but it just basically says a couple things. I'm out until this date. I'm not gonna read your email. Here's who you can contact if you need to need help. And if you really need me, you can recontact me on this day when I'm back in the office, okay? And then they meet with their team, right? When they come back the first morning, they're back from leave or vacation, whatever. They meet with their team. They do an ostrich meeting. The team fills them in on what's been going on so they understand. And then they screen share and the entire team watches them go into their inbox, select all and delete. And they go to inbox zero, day one back from vacation or leave. That is so in, empowering and, and, and uh, in, in really intentional to what we want our people to do. We, want, we value their time. We want them to go on vacation. We want them to take care of themselves, not burn out. But if they get a thousand emails while they're gone on vacation, what do you think their, their anxiety levels are like back when they come back on Monday? I mean, it's like sky high. They're probably reading their emails while they're on vacation the whole time, just trying to keep caught up so they don't have to come back to that. And that's not what we want at all. So we tell them if you're wired, you're fired. We have some exceptions. We will text senior execs or we'll text a salesperson if they're gone. Like if something really big moves, like some big deal or movie they're working on, we made, you know, if it's going to cost somebody money, okay, fine. We'll text you if we really know we really need you. There's something going on. But in general, for most people, um, they don't need to be on. Now, the reason we have them meet with everybody and show them about uh, emptying their inbox is because people won't do it, right? We need to empower that around that idea to help them do that. The next one is a tiger team meeting. So imagine you have a tiger in your bathroom. It's a lot bigger problem than a cockroach, right? Think of all the things you would need to do to get a tiger out of your bathroom. Animal control, a dart gun, a crane, or maybe like 10 really strong people to help you drag it out after you've drugged it, right? All of these things would be super important. So when we have a tiger team meeting, people know that they're coming to this meeting in order to uh, deal with a lot of complex issues. We're gonna be maybe do an hour or two hours, or maybe it's an all day strategic meeting, right? Um, there's gonna be a long agenda. There's gonna be, you know, you have to have research and you're gonna be coming prepared to really deal with particular parts of that agenda. Right? So the, the intensity and what's expected of you is very different here. So you know what your Tiger team meeting, cool, this is a big deal. This is a big meeting, right? This is not, hey, can you help me out for 15 minutes, right? A cool 15 minute favor to help me with this thing in Excel, right? Or how do I do this thing in this other program? It sets the intentionality in a very different way. Now, the next meeting type we have is called a tsunami meeting. Believe it or not, this is a fake meeting. So we use this to practice our meetings. Every month for 30 minutes, uh, every one of my finite teams, excuse me, uh, infinite teams. So sales, marketing, customer service, uh, verifications, research, each of my teams that we have, they come and they do a practice meeting where they're given a prompt. And it might be, what would we do if? So usually something big. 
What would we do if we lost half our customers? What would we do if we doubled in size? What would we do if half of our team got COVID and couldn't work? What would we do if? Right? These big, big ideas. And then they discuss it and they argue and they go back and forth and they come up with ideas and plans. This gives them practice in how to uh, collaborate, how, the practice in, in giving their good ideas and realizing that no one's gonna call them stupid, no one's gonna threaten to fire them for not going along with their idea, right? There's, we're building psychological safety and the manager can observe the group and say, I'm noticing that Tom's talking way too much and I'm noticing that Susie isn't talking at all. So I need to go have a conversation with both of them. Tom, we need to ask him, and I'm gonna give you that wording in a second, to shut up a little bit, right? Not those words, but we need him to talk a little less. And we need to go back and get Susie to feel comfortable talking a bit more. And that's how we work on the group dynamics. And then they go forward throughout the month and they're in other real meetings. And now they have that safety. Now they have that encouragement. Now they have that plan on how they're going to participate better. And the way we do that is by giving them what I call feed forward. In fact, I got this from my buddy, Marshall Goldsmith, when he was on my radio show a couple of years ago. Um, he's a fantastic author, if you don't know who he is. And he, he, he first introduced me to this idea. Instead of feedback, right, where we tell people, geez, in that last meeting, you, wouldn't, you were talking too much, and then people want to argue, or they're defensive because it's past behavior. Instead, we want to go to them and say, hey, in the next meeting, can you make sure that you're talking or you're listening twice as much as you're talking? Or hey, in the next minute meeting, can you help me make sure that Susie gets heard? I, I noticed she's having a hard time, you know, speaking her mind. Maybe you can help me draw her in that conversation. How do you give them that forward behavior that you want? I've even jokingly said to people, hey, in the next meeting, can you not be such a jerk? And they would, yeah, okay, I can do that, right? Because I'm, I'm asking about forward behavior. If I said, hey, why were you such a jerk in the last meeting? That's immediately like defensive and, and they're going to be upset and we're going to have a fight, right? So this slight change in wording helps us. If you ever have a, meet, a team that's struggling, it's really great to have them turn to each other or out on a Zoom call and just say, share what you need from the team going forward. How can the team help you going forward? This would be really, really powerful.